And finally, I would like to invite our fifth Thai star, Venkat Krishnamurti. Venkat will share his colorful entrepreneurial journey. Thank you, Shaker. Um, I have a couple of slides, actually. All right, so I'll, you know, I'm not going to give you any advice. Um, I don't know that I'm qualified to do that. I'll just tell you about what I did. Um, so it starts with this, uh, this movie, The Mask. I was a 20-year-old uh, PhD student at Stanford. I ran into an animator who was, I was looking for something fun to do. And I ran into this guy who was working on this movie, The Mask, and I was fascinated by what he was doing. He was creating a 3D model. And he said that that mask would take him, what, four weeks uh, to make in 3D. And he had the physical mask sitting right next to him, and he was working on the computer. It was very laborious. And I said, that's ridiculous. I know how to do that in a couple of hours. And uh, so I did. I wrote some code, and uh, I, wrote, wrote, I devised a system um, laser scanning software, you know, millions of lines of code. But at the end of it, uh, it was a phenomenal system. And in fact, it did succeed in, you know, converting those models in a couple of hours. So it, it was a quite a revolution. Um, some guys at Industrial Light and Magic found me and they said, hey, we want to buy that system. So I said, okay, well, how about uh, X dollars and you can have it? They said, okay. So it's my first experience. I was uh, just a geeky student. I had no idea how to do commercial transactions. And uh, I probably charged too little. And uh, th they said, OK. And then I had my first lesson on entrepreneurship. Uh, Stanford took a sixth of it. School of Engineering took a sixth. Uh, sorry, actually, Stanford took a third of it. The School of Engineering took another third. Uh, my advisor took a sixth. And I got one sixth of it. <laughs> Um, but it was, a, it was a good experience. It was a very good experience. I kind of figured out, you know, that whole issue of uh, what happens when you start slicing and dicing uh, things. Uh, it was subsequently used for things like X-Men. Uh, it was used for, you know, all kinds of movies uh, all over the place. And uh, I ended up getting an Academy Award in 2001, many years later as a result of the work. So any... Now, uh, this was the second lesson I learned. I actually published all my work. So I didn't have any patents on any of this technology. <laughs> so, you know, I still find uh, these articles in special effects magazines where they say, oh, you know, this guy Venkat, he invented this thing and we're using it for Lord of the Rings or we're using it for X-Men, the next movie or whatever it is. But it was, it, was a good, um, it was a good experience. And, you know, one of the better experiences was getting the award from Renée Zellweger. And she is tiny, I have to tell you. <clears throat> so here I was, I'd done a couple of these deals, I'd made a little bit of money, I was still at Stanford, and I met a couple of business students, school students, uh, who came to me and said, uh, you know, hey, listen, are you interested in starting a company, da, da, da. I said, okay, you know, sure. I, hadn't, I had no idea what that meant, actually. Um, so one of the guys actually had an invisible orthodontic retainer, and he said, I would love to be able to create this instead of braces. So I said, yeah, sure, I can do that. So I recruited a couple of uh, other PhD students. I got them to quit. Um, and and I, wrote the, I wrote the code for it. And then four weeks later, we went to Kleiner Perkins. And within 15 minutes, they agreed to give us two and a half million bucks to start a company. It blew my mind, completely blew my mind. Um, so here we were with the company. Um, and this company went public uh, four, year, four and a half years later. But a few months into it, I said, what am I doing straightening teeth? I don't want to do this. Um, so I vested a fourth of my equity, uh, and then I really started my next company, uh, which was really something I was very passionate about, which is fast cars. And I was very fascinated by sort of the design process of these fast cars, and I'd encountered these designers at Porsche and these designers at Honda and so on and so forth. And um, I helped them. I designed sort of this CAD CAM package that would help them design these exquisite organic shapes. And if you look at all the new Porsches and uh, the Mercedes SLKs and all of these fast cars, all of, this, all of these use my technology now to, uh, to design, uh, design those cars. Uh, this, company, this company was called Paraform. And uh, it, you know, this guy, Michael Lewis, who wrote The Big Short, 
uh, he had just come into the valley at the time and he was completely fascinated by the story of, of this company. And I was in an incubator, that's that skinny guy over there, that's me in the middle. And um, he, we, got a, we got on the cover of the New York Times Magazine, which led us to get our funding and all of this good stuff. Um, so that company was going pretty well, um, but it was one of these companies where we were ramping revenue, but it just didn't seem like it would ever break out and go public. Uh, and I was having, um, I met this guy in Belgium um, who was running a company called Metris, and he had a hardware company and um, I had lunch with him at a fantastic restaurant in Belgium and we, we sort of talked strategy and we decided that the best path forward was to merge the companies to be able to sell an entire suite of products for end-to-end -end design to manufacturing to auto companies. So we would become the measurement and design company for these, for these automotive companies. So it was a big idea, uh, but it worked actually. So we merged the companies, uh, we created the software, the hardware, we bought a couple of other hardware companies and, and that company went public a few years later uh, and then it eventually got bought by Nikon. But then as usual, I, I, I sort of, uh, well, okay, let me stop there, not as usual. I had my first child and um, we were still in California and you know, it's a big change uh, in your life. You start thinking about you know, things very differently and I, I was getting bored as well. I said, okay, time for another one. And then my wife got pregnant again. And I was like, well, okay, well, uh, yeah, that's okay. I can still do another company. Um, and then um, we found out, that's, that's my wife, uh, and that's my eldest son, Nikhil. We found out that she was actually uh, pregnant with triplets, um, <laughs> natural triplets. It was uh, not, it is not our family or anything of that sort. And at the same exact time, um, a, a friend of mine called Sanjay Sarma, who's a professor at MIT, called me up and said, hey, you know, dude, I'm starting this company here called Oat Systems, and, you know, we're going to get some good funding, and it's in the enterprise software space, data, you love this stuff. Um, and I talked to my wife, we made the decision literally in a couple of hours, because uh, we found out, as I was talking to him, we found out we had triplets, so it must have been fate. And, and, and we'd always wanted to enjoy New England winters. Um, we'd heard a lot about them. So we said, let's do this. And so we, so we moved over here, we had our boys, and that's the four of them. And it was, it was a wonderful uh, you know, few years at Oat. And uh, um, if you skip ahead to the next slide, um, you know, this, was one of those, um, this was one of those plays where it started off as a middleware software company. And we found that um, you know, it was going well, but there was no way we could have gone public at the rate we were going. Uh, so we sort of converted into a vertically oriented uh, play in apparel and we got bought by a company called Checkpoint Systems, which is a public company in the retail space. And so, and then uh, Checkpoint offered me the job of the chief technology officer, overlooking all of their products, you know, everything from video analytics to data to, um, you know, innovative uses of um, sensors and so on and so forth. So that sounded fun. I did that for a couple of years. And then our triplets, um, who were a lot of work for, maybe a little work for me, a lot of work for my wife, they, w they went back to school all day, and I suddenly found I had a lot more time. Um, so I started thinking about my next startup, and a month and a half ago, I decided to do that again. So I just decided to quit that comfortable job, as uh, Amar was saying, you know, it's, it's uh, the tyranny of uh, a little success. So I decided to avoid that and working on my next gig now. So that's my story. Thank you very much, yeah. Thank you very much, Venkat. Quite a treat.